Good morning, everyone. How are you? Marco, you must set your alarm clock with this. I can't wait to see more pictures of how your quilt is coming along. I've decided you are our ninja warrior when it comes to quilt making during COVID. You are just turning them out like there's no tomorrow, which is wonderful. So um, here's the deal, you guys. Before I go anywhere, I got to tell you this. We have been having really weird internet issues here where it will just go out. And so if all of a sudden I'm bye-bye, I probably am bye-bye. <laughs> so poor John waited in queue for an hour and a half or something for something. I don't know what, but you know, you get online and you have your, you know, yada yada. And um, <laughs> when it was his turn, the internet went down. I was amazed he didn't split a gasket. Hey, Barbara. Barbara, by the way, thank you for staying in the forum and helping people learn how to upload pictures and all of that. That is certainly not my ball of wax, uh, but Barbara's keeping us straight. And speaking of Barbara Black, uh, she is going to be shepherding us through the BOM in 2021. And we are going to reveal it on November 1st. Uh, stay tuned for more details. We're gonna, I'm gonna try and Skype in with Ricky and show you the quilt. I'm very excited about it. It is by somebody who I adore her work, and I'll tell you who, uh, Wendy Williams. Uh, her work is stinking amazing. And I'm so excited about this BOM. I just Oh, so, but that's all I'm going to tell you. We you saw that we got the kits and all that. We are going to be moving starting this next weekend. Justin's flying to California this Wednesday, and there's going to be a lot of toting and this and that. And then a really serendipitous thing happened that was wonderful. A friend of mine who's in my mini group is, I hope it's okay with her that she's closing her offices. They're moving to a home office, but she's got exactly some of the furnishings that we need. Uh, one is which is a conference table. It's this adorable oval wood table with a pet is on a pedestal. It's very modern looking. So we're it's all coming together and it's very exciting. Now the other thing on Wednesday was I goofed up. You could even put a stronger word in front of that if you so like. I told people to get Apple Web. You want Apple Web Plus. And so don't worry, when we see Apple Web, we contact you. In some cases, I was set in the naughty corner and had to call people. Thank you for your kindness. But you want Apple Web Plus. And what the plus means is that there's paper on it. All right. So the Apple Web is like you're working with a Misty Fuse or something like that. And it's great for some applications, but for our faces project, you want Apple Web Plus, okay? So we're taking care of you. Um, all right, you guys have been sending me pictures. Oh, the other thing um, that I'm watching is Pull Dark, P-O-L-D-A-R-K. If you're a fan of um, Downton Abbey, and I think probably most of us are were uh pole dark is a masterpiece theater show that's on my friend got me started on it joanne sharp and it is really good and it's a period piece set on the um i think 1700s uh and what is i'll give you the upshot okay there um is this gentleman that's over in america fighting the revolutionary war he's from england or and his whole troop gets taken down. This happens right away, so I'm not ruining anything. So he goes back home, and like a year and a half later, everybody thinks he's dead, and and he comes back, and his girlfriend is announcing a marriage to his cousin. So let's go with that. It's super good. It's super in interesting, and each episode is a treat. And like Joanne kept saying, it just gets better and better and better and better. I'm watching it on Netflix, but it was originally on Masterpiece Theater. I'm not sure if they're still doing more or whatever. I'm in the first series. And then the other one that is only eight shows 
uh, is Little Fires Everywhere, and it's on Hulu. It's a really good book that my daughter recommends being the high school librarian. And it's one of Reese Witherspoon's things that she's doing. The first episode is a little slow, but boy, by the time you get into five, four, five, whatever, I, riveted, all right? So that's Little Fires Everywhere, and apparently it's a fabulous read, too. So there we go. There, yep, and this series, Poldark, is wonderful. Hi from Germany, yay! Okay, so you guys sent in more pictures. You can't imagine how much this thrills me to get these, all right? So, Suji, thank you for adding more red. And you're ready to quilt it. You're gonna sew it together. I would for sure put in that uh, that a red flange before you bind it. And I think that will just pull the whole thing together. I mean, it already is pulled together, it's beautiful. And so I think that's what I would do. Also, I wanna point something out here, you guys. In the upper right-hand corner, she needed a spacer. And so there it is. I would also try taking those two handled baskets, and I just thought of this right now. I didn't even think of this when I looked at it originally. Those two upper right handled baskets, move them up and try the spacer in between the um, the top. You got a four patch there. Try it in the middle of there. I have no idea if it's going to look good or not, but I just that just occurred to me. I'd fiddle with that just a little bit to see. But look at, I mean, it's so innocuous. It's like, it's not even there, and yet it's helping her get the math done. So that's fabulous. All right. Then we have D. Lockwood. And I got to tell you, I didn't know how to turn. Sometimes I know how to turn them, and sometimes I don't. It just depends what program I'm using. But uh, this actually made me smile. My guess is we're looking at it on its side. That's my guess. And those are wool little appliques that she's put on. And the the thing the thing that uh, Wooldock said was she thinks she needs help with value. I don't think so. I think you've got it going on. The only block that is kicked back in my book is if we go to the right hand side, or go to the one above the rabbit. That one is kicked back. It doesn't matter. It works. It's fabulous. So. Just sew that thing together, and then you can see in the bottom, she's using that fabric, uh, uh, some sort of border fabric for um, a spacer. Looks great. If you wanna make your quilt bit bigger, add more. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, this is Miss Jane's. Okay, Miss Jane's, you're ready to do your thing, and guys, I can't make it any bigger because of the, uh, the picture is a small pixelated but you did throw in some of that uh, border fabric as spacers. I would not have thought, I mean, I did it on mine and I'd like to take credit for it, but it was actually one of my friends that said, try throwing in some of that fabric. Cause I honestly didn't know how to work with that fabric in the basket uh, genre. So yay. Okay. Red work Renee. So this has a whole story with it and it's in the forum and I can't remember, but it's given being given to somebody, I believe whose name is Violet or it was named after a great grandma who was Violet or something like that. I'm gonna, I love the applique, it's fabulous. I'm gonna give you one cautionary tale and maybe I'm being a weirdo about this, but you've got, if we take the square on point, just, I'm gonna say, just be aware of this, okay? And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. But you've got this square on point and you've got really high contrast dark backs there. I would be inclined to perhaps also do one on the top at 12 o'clock. Just because it kind of looks like it's floating there. But I also know you are still super busy and working on it because you've added those extra two. So I know you're not even close to being done. But when you have such a stark difference of backgrounds, um, be very careful that it flows through the whole thing. And I'm telling you, I wish we were in a class together because I may ask you to try something and it doesn't work. This is where you've got to trust your, um, your design sense. And you guys, you are designers. You would be making quilts. So, okie dokie. So quilt bobbin, <laughs> your names, 
love it. Uh, this is great quilt bobbin. And I want to just say one thing. Before you sew the whole quilt together, and you've got some spaces to fill in and things like that, so, and I guess I'm saying this to everybody, get those handles sewed down at that before you piece it all together. I mean, you can do it after, but it's just kind of a pain in the behind. And also, I think the bottom two, I, I, God, I hope you guys, I'm not stepping on people's toes. I'm hoping that if you put it on the forum, I have the ability, well, I will comment. Those two bottom baskets that are upside down, I think I'd turn them around. Everybody else is marching straight up. And so I think I would want them all to mar ma march up. But I will tell you, in the olden days, you would find quilts, say like baskets, where half of them would be facing one way and half of them would be facing the other way. And I think it was so that when a person walked around the bed, they were looking at it um, correctly. They were never looking at it upside down. So. I mean, there's that too. I love, love, love historical old quilts. And in fact, the lecture that I'm giving for guilds, one of the things I'm talking about is when I find a crazy, crazy old quilt that's insane, how I make it into something contemporary. Okay, we just did quilt bobbin, and this is A M B. Wow, this is fun. And I'm going to tell you something, AMB. The flowers that you're putting in those center baskets knock my socks off. Love it. I love the scrappiness of this. However, I'm going to ask you to do something with this. That upper, the, okay, the four big baskets, the upper right with that polka dot background, I love that. I could see a whole quilt out of just those baskets with those crazy, fabulous, playful applique. But I would like to see that black and white or the black polka dot on white in a couple other places on the quilt. I, even if they were in, I mean, I don't know if you're done making baskets, you might be, but even if they were in just squares, like you've got a square that is below the bottom left basket, you've got a square to the left of the um, bottom, 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 okay, bottom left, you've got two squares. You could do pinwheels, you could do whatever, but I want to see that polka dot fabric in there more. It is making quite a statement and do not take it out because to me it absolutely sings and it says it says come play with me that's what that says okay okay miss rays thank you thank you thank you everybody we are going to give miss rays a standing ovation for this okay whoa whoa <laughs> i love this and I love this because in everything in everything give thanks in everything you guys because we're just going through some really crappy times right now and here we are as a virtual guild being able to hang out together I I I look forward to meeting all of you at some venue and I just this Golly, I just, oh, and uh, I believe Miss Ray said that it, this challenged her. Um, and I love that border. And I'll give you a hint that our Hanukkah Christmas quilt is going to have a fun applique border. We're going to do it all fusy, down and dirty. But in the midst of everything that the world is going through, in everything, give thanks. Kind of reminds me of the dancing guy uh, that I showed on Wednesday that I put on my Facebook page. You can look at the world one way or you can look at the world another way. And right now, I am ever so grateful to have you guys. So I don't want to be a preacher here. But anyways, yeah, you guys, that's pretty spectacular, huh? I do hope that you're going to share these in local, local shows or even big shows and all that because you guys are doing rock star stuff. All right, I'm going to go over to my um, PowerPoint, and we're going to talk about pressing. Oh, look, we have a meeting. 
Oh, it's done. <laughs> so let me get to this. There we go. We're going to talk about pressing matters. And I, I have to, it's funny, I have to apologize. Um, jo John and I, this is one of the things I did at the super seminar. I had like five things and this was just a random thing. And I tried to get the Ricky Tim super quilt seminars thing off it. I know he put it on. I couldn't figure out how to get it off. And I thought with my luck, um, I'll delete the whole thing. So we're going to pretend we're at a super seminar right now. Okay. So let's talk about irons and I'm not talking about the bottom right hand kind. <laughs> there are a ton of of irons out there guys a ton of them and one of the things that I learned is that irons are made let's let's pretend like we're all going into a store or let's say with the Panasonic that we sell okay and let's say they're I buy a Panasonic iron from TQS and then and then Margot buys a Panasonic iron from TQS and then Barbara buys a Panasonic iron from TQS None of those irons are the same, okay? They are all different because the pieces are piecemealed from around uh, the world. I learned that from Kay Brooks. And so what that means is that when you get your iron, you have to commune with where is the medium, where is the hot, and where is the low because they are all different. Personally, I have the cordless Panasonic because then I can fuse on my design wall. And then my go-to big girl one is my Olisa. Oliso. I love the Oliso. It's the kind that just kind of jumps up on little legs. Now, my it's that one, it, I don't know if that's an Oliso, but if you go to the right-hand side, one over from the right, see how it's standing up? You never have to like sit it on its butt. It just comes up when you let go of it and when you touch it, it goes down. Now, the challenge with this iron is that <clears throat> like when I go up to the cabin, I don't have this expensive iron. Well, so I could burn the house down real easily thinking you just let it go down. Although my dear friend Robin Maimoni gifted her Oliso to me because that's what she was almost doing. And guess what's going up to the cabin? So we want to get it flat, okay? And it's funny, I you know, you don't have to use a hammer. Although I do think it was Susan Cleveland on our show who has like a rubber mallet <laughs> that she beats things down with. I think it was her. I don't remember. If I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. So we've been going over this over and over and over. But if you're a new quilter, I just can't be, talk about this strong enough. So this is our quarter square triangle. And it's when you cut a square and then you cut it corner to corner. And you know how big to cut the square because you take the finished measurement and add one and a quarter to it. What you end up with then are the outside edge on straight of grain and then the 90 degree on bias. This can really get you in trouble if you start pressing like a maniac. So where those arrows are, they're pointing to where the bias is. So my iron is gonna go up to that tip, I wonder if that's the next slide now. Up to that tip, and then I'm gonna pull off. My iron is never, ever, ever going to touch that exposed edge. Also, when I'm pressing seams from one side to another, I will um, press it on the pretty side up. Because if you press it the other way, and I think a lot of people when they start, they press it upside down because you can see which way the seams are going, you have got more than a 50% chance of pressing a tuck into it. So I always do it pretty side up and be very aware of the exposed bias. Okay, once you have sewn it together, um, here you've got the two sides in the upper left and then the bottom right, it's been sewn together you can press the you know what out of it because nothing is going to stretch and you really want to make sure that there are no tucks in fact i'm looking at this and if we look at the x uh the sewn together one if we go in the middle and go to the upper right hand corner i'm not sure that that is really pressed uh oh 
not open, but clean enough. I am a maven when it comes to ironing. Now, if you're sewing a strip, I set a seam. Now, Marianne Fonz has you set a seam all the time. The reason I'm cautious about setting a seam is that people can get over aggressive and not pay attention to the bias. So when I'm doing a long strip, I do set the seam because there's nothing to stretch. In fact, what I do is on my ironing board or wherever I'm ironing, I draw a line with my friction pin. And then if there's any sort of bowing, I can, when I'm setting the seam, straighten it out using that line. And the beauty of that line is that with the friction is that it will go away if, when, you, when the heat hits it. So it's not on your ironing surface forever. So once I've set the seam, then I turn it over and again, I press from the top. Boy, that iron looks smanking new. Not, not like now. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm talking about. See how that has bowed? I could, when I'm setting it, I could easily, easily whip that into shape and get it um, straight. And why that happens, I don't know. Other than perhaps it's cut cross grain and there is a little bit of a stretch in that. I'll have to think about that. Barbara Black would know that. Okay, people want to know to steam or not to steam. I have steam in my irons. When I steam will be when the block is completed and there's no exposed edges. Uh, I don't steam when I'm dealing with biases because it could get on there and it could stretch. I think that 90% of people's issues in quilt making are not getting, when piecing, I'm going to say, are not getting the quarter inch correctly. And I've shared with you how Sally Collins does that. Cut two strips at one and a quarter, sew them together, and then when you press them, it should order to measure two, and then also screwing it up when they're when you're ironing. So those are seem like such crazy little minute things, but they're super important, okay? Now, here's the thing that, that Ricky says, why he doesn't use steam, and it's because irons get incontinent. And it's true, they do, okay? Irons do break. They are not, it is not a purchase that you are making for your lifetime. It's just not. I mean, if an iron lasts me four years, I am thrilled. So this can happen when you leave water in your iron. Um, so like, let's say I'm, I've steamed stuff and I'm done for the day. I would get that water out of the iron. So we've talked about pressing seams from one side to another. Now, what about when you have seams that are opened? And I have to tell you, I believe I pieced this on the Philip and Naylor show. I don't know the show number or anything like that, but I, I was, um, I, we were on location in Texas and we were in Cynthia England's house. We were in the kitchen. Wow. I remember this like yesterday. And then Philippa was on and boy, did she wow us that that was a good show. It's on Trapunto and all that. But anyways, when I've got <clears throat> more than six seams coming together, I consider pressing open. And in this case, I've got a bazillion seams coming together. Yeah, I just had to show off. Okay. <laughs> so when you press things seams open, it's now you're going to press from the wrong side because how else are you going to do it? And that's when my little fake fingernails come in real handy. But there are hams, sewing hams, that you can also use to help open seams up. So now let's talk about your ironing surface. Oh, oh, wait, I want to back up. One thing really important. If you are pressing seams open, you're going to want to make sure that the threads are of a suitable match to the fabric. So in this case, I'd probably do an off-white. And the reason is, is let's go and pray. Let's put our hands together like a little kid is saying, now I lay me down to sleep, okay? You've got your hands mirroring each other. I want you to keep your pinkies touching each other and open your hands up like you're reading a book. Okay, so that's what you're doing with this seam. When you've opened up that book, you will be able to see the thread colors going across. So if I had like a dark thread in there, it would show, 
all right? And let's say one side were dark and one side were light. I might do a dark thread on top, a darker thread on top, like a gray, and a lighter thread on the bobbin. But I've never really mentioned thread color to this point, and it is important. All right, pressing surfaces. When I am doing my piecing, I am on a very hard surface. Well, fairly hard. <laughs> I love the wool mats. Um, actually, we're coming up with one at R&K that's going to have a wool mat on one side and a cutting, a cutting mat on the other side, and it won't warp the cutting mat because you know, you guys, when you, if you put that wool mat on your um, uh, cutting mat and you put heat on it, it is going to warp your cutting mat. So if you're using a wool mat, make sure it's on an individual surface that is not your cutting mat. Um, the other thing is I do have a piece of uh, board that I've put a flannel on top, um, a, um, by, what's that called, uh, batting on top, and then I've put just a muslin on top of that. That's very, very firm. But that's all good for piecing. What about applique? Okay, applique, I want a fluffy surface, all right? Because what I want to do is when I iron it, I want to have the applique going down into the fluffy surface. And the fluffy surface might be a towel that's folded in half. It might be two hand towels. If you press it the other way, it will smash it down flat and you do not want that. You want to keep dimension to the whole thing. So see, boy, I started this a hundred years ago in a Gwen Marston class, and it was so much fun. And I, it's all done by hand, and you can really see how crappy it is. <laughs> That's why I love machine applique and the ways I've learned how to do circles and all that good stuff. Oh, by the way, check out Apple Pops. Um, we have them in the store and I think there's a video. It's a pretty cool way to do circles. <laughs> no. Okay. There's nothing wrong with this. It is folk art. Yeah. Now the same thing with red work, guys. You are not going to want to smash it down. So when you go to do press your red work, turn it upside down on a fluffy surface. So I'm going to escape and see what happens. If I can get back to my eCam. <laughs> I did it. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about, and I think I have, but pretty much I want you guys to get up and move when you're pressing, right? I mean, but if you're doing like foundation paper piecing and this and that, I got this little tea, um, TV trade table at either Walmart or um, Target. And you can see where I had my son-in-law cut it down to the bottom, image, uh, bottom crossbar. And that's so that when I'm working here and I'm turning around, I'm not, ha I'm not pressing up high like this, I'm down lower. So that is extremely, extremely convenient all right um i haven't talked about this for setting the seam once you have completed your block and you've pressed it then i will also take this little weight and put it on top and that helps even make the seam crisper so while great grandma used these um in the olden days to iron she must have had a hot pad or something these are great for setting. They also have uh, clappers is what they're called. There's a lot of different clappers out there on the market, uh, but I would check your local uh, thrift shop for this or your antique shop because this is just marvelous. And I don't bring it to the set because uh, I'm afraid it's too heavy. I mean, what does this thing weigh, 15 pounds? I mean, I don't know. So here is the other thing. Oh, here's an interesting tidbit. Speaking of in the olden days in this, we were on a we were on a cruise. Oh yeah, I want to tell you one more thing. I'll put this in my lap so I don't forget it. We were on a cruise and we were in Paul Revere's house in Boston. And you know, in the olden first I'm gonna start off with this. I started this story. What did most women die of back then? Back in the olden days. We'll go back to Paul Revere. You know, childbirth? I mean, I don't know. Well, I learned they die of their skirts catching on fire. 
from in the kitchen. I learned that at Paul Revere's house, which is absolute bacon, which is absolutely fascinating and horrifying at the same time. So, you know, I think of this and I think of Paul Revere and then my mind just goes from there. The other thing I've touched on, I don't know, I just thought pretty recently, is that when you do go and press your seams, you don't want that kind of thing going on. That is just sloppy. Even, I'm even getting picky about like that. You just don't want that. It will, it, you're, you're lot, like, look at that. That's horrible. This was from some sample for my fabric line back in the day. And so if I were to decide I was going to quilt this little sample, you can be sure I would go back. Where did you go? And make sure everything is going in the proper um, direction. And just do it. It will make the top look so much better. Oh, I love that you guys are putting up things that you can use in lieu of a clapper and or my iron. So anyways, um, pressing is a really big deal. Just to catch up with what we're doing, and I'm getting very excited, is next week we're going to talk about borders. You are going to have time to sew. I will be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, you will have time to sew. I don't know what I'm, I don't know if I'm going to tap dance on Wednesday and Friday. I, I don't know. But on the next Monday, that would be the 2nd of November, I believe, uh, when we're moving into our warehouses, we're going to be starting the faces class. And again, you're going to need, it's going to be raw edge applique. You're going to need some sort of fusible Apple Web Plus is what you want if you don't have any of that. Um, it's much finer than the Apple stick. We will use Apple stick when we're doing our holiday quilt. The other thing is, is if you need it, get your order in today. On Monday, Suzanne and Julie will be filling weekend orders and on Tuesday, and then the store is a little bit, um, gonna be a little bit shut just for a week while we move. I put my blocks on point, put all the neighborhoods together, works great. Now, how do I deal with all the edges? Points that aren't necessary, the same size as the triangle. Any suggestions on easy remedy to inconsistent triangles on edges from Susan? You're gonna have to just fill in, I think is what you're gonna have to do, uh, maybe with quarter square triangles. Uh, I'll tell you what, Susan, I would really, really wish you could put this up in the forum or uh yeah or i don't i'm going to give you an email address you guys but don't everybody bomb me with emails please it's my business one but it's mainly for uh um approving comments and stuff it's um a l e x a n d r s n at gmail i i really need to see this because i know as soon as you do put things on points things can get pretty wacky on the edges i know that's true um, is there any way to keep the Panasonic cordless iron at the highest heating for more than a couple of minutes? No. See, and that's why it's not my primary iron. Okay. But for over here, it's absolutely fabulous. If you do not steam while piecing, do you use best press or just press dry? I will use best press if it's all, if there are no exposed biases. I will typically use best press before I cut into the fabric and or when the block is finished. I usually, the truth of it is, I usually don't best press before I cut into the fabric. I just make sure everything's flat and beautiful. But if it's looking a little, like it needs a little attitude adjustment when it's all over, I would think nothing of putting, I would put best press on. Pressing is not ironing and ironing is not pressing. That's exactly right. Ironing is what I did to this blouse. Okay, back and forth and up and down and side and side. And actually somebody else even, I'm wondering if it's you that wrote me this and I forgot to say it. Pressing as you go down, you come up. You go down, you come up. I'm telling you guys, it's a make or break it. Okay, if you get goofy with your ironing. Starch before cut. Okay, I just said that. All right. Um, could you repeat what papers we need for applique? It is called... Apple Web Plus. It comes on a roll. It is extremely sheer and light and lovely. Hold on.
Uh, of course, I have a bolt of it, okay? Oh, wait, no, this isn't it. What am I showing you? Um, nope, I can't show you. It's just, it's meshy. Oh, I was going to show you something else. It's Friday, okay? Um, it's meshy. It's on paper. It it would be like steam a seam, only steam a seam is repositionable, but it's like a paper on one side that you take off. So that's kind of how you're going to work with it, okay? Aplo Web Plus. It comes on a roll, all right? So you're going to want to get that. Um, because your faces are going to be layer after layer after layer after layer. And I'm thinking about how we're going to do the class. I was trying to figure out how to do the faces class. And I was like, well, can I do how Yvonne taught it? Um, can I do the way Freddie teaches it? No, I'm going to do the way Alex does it. That said, go watch uh, Sujata Shaw and Freddie's show. And you can see how Freddie, you'll see a ton of Freddie's faces. And she does it different than me. And I just think it's all so exciting. I can't stand it. How do I get the pins with the magnet box? We're going to have those in the store real soon. We just uh, we just ordered them, okay? So they're, they're in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yay! Okay, guys, have a great weekend. On Monday, we're going to talk borders. And I'll, uh, that's when I'll do the big reveal on mine. But I still have, I'm still questioning one part of mine that I would, I'm going to want your help with, okay? So, yes, I love my birds singing in my background. I do. We have a bird haven in the back. Well, a wild bird haven. And on that, I'll leave you with one cute story. My friend, Margaret Peters, many of you knew her. Um, she had an aviator in her backyard and her grandkid came in and said, grandma, grandma, I opened the door and let the birds go on a big fly. <laughs> Goodbye.